Okay, so starting off, apologies for my sick as fuck voice right now, but it's just what we got to do, right? Very deep, very masculine. Maybe I should get sick more often. Um, tested negative for COVID, by the way. That's cool, right? Um, so we have a 59-year-old woman. She has a 20-pound weight loss past three months. Hematic, we look at the hematologic studies. The hematocrit's 35%. Normal range is 42 plus or minus 5 in women, 47 plus or minus 5 in men. So she has a slight anemia. MCV is normocytic, 80 to 100 is normal. So right off the bat, we can have a tentative thought of, is this anemia of chronic disease? Because that's our most common cause of normocytic anemia for USMLE. I should make a very important point that anemia of chronic disease can indeed be microcytic, okay, for USMLE. Uh, I've seen this on 2CK questions in particular. Students get the questions wrong, uh, where the MCV might be 75, e.g. In a, in a pediatrics case where the kid has juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And they're like, wait, I thought uh, anemia chronic disease was normal acidic. And it's like, yes, it is classically normal acidic, but it, they gave you an MCV of 75 or 72. I've seen it. So your thought should be with respect to anemia chronic disease. Yes, normally normal acidic, but can indeed be microcytic for you assimilate. Don't eliminate if you see it being microcytic, okay? Next point, serum sodium 133. Uh, that's hyponatremia, normal range 135 to 145. Gotta take the training wheels off, okay? I know you'll have your reference ranges on the exam, but you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna need to not waste time, okay? Take the training wheels off, know your reference ranges. 135 to 145, normal range for sodium. So we've got a smoker, she, she's a smoker and she has hypertension. So when we connect smoking to hyponatremia and anemia of chronic disease and weight loss, this paints a picture of small cell bronchogenic carcinoma with perineoplastic SIDH leading to our hyponatremia. Uh, and of course we have cachexia secondary to the malignancy. Now, this is where it's like, ha ha, gotcha type of question. Perineoplastic syndrome's wrong, all right? Whilst, yes, that's the cause of SIDH, or SIDH is a perineoplastic effect of small cell bronchogenic carcinoma, perineoplastic syndrome in and of itself is not uh, what cachexia is. So cachexia is a cytokine effect, choice A. Uh, it's due to TNF-alpha. So this, is, this question has two main learning points. Number one, don't just automatically jump on an answer. Uh, just kind of chill the fuck out for two seconds when you see a question. Uh, number two is you need to know the factoid that TNF alpha. It's also it's also got another name uh, like cachectic factor, but TNF alpha is the cause of cachexia secondary to cancer. Okay, so the immune system can start responding to the cancer and produce TNF alpha, and or the cancer itself can. Uh, produce its own TNF-alpha. But uh, nevertheless, cachexia uh, is due to TNF-alpha. That's effect of cytokine. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for this question, okay? I mean, some of the questions I write are going to be a little bit more complicated. Renal insufficiency I wrote here, wrong answer. Uh, that's a cause, that is one important ideology of anemia of chronic disease. Uh, when you're treating anemia of chronic disease, you always have to address the underlying condition, okay? So usually there is no treatment. If renal failure is the ideology, you can give EPO, okay, erythropoietin. But if renal if renal insufficiency is not the ideology of anemia chronic disease, you cannot give EPO. Uh, and that's honestly pretty much it for this question. Just a perineoplastic syndrome for small cell would be SIDH giving you hyponatremia. It could be uh, ACTH production giving you Cushing syndrome. It could be Lambert Eaton syndrome when you have autoantibodies against a presynaptic voltage gated calcium channels can be cerebellar dysfunction, where you get ataxia, you get anti HU, HU, and anti YO, YO antibodies, uh, secondary to small cell carcinoma. And then, of course, squamous cell carcinoma, uh, PTHRP, okay, so hypercalcemia. Um, adenocarcinoma of the lung can lead to trucyocyte malignancy, that's migratory thrombophlebitis, okay, and classically head of pancreas adenocarcinoma, but I've seen it in questions for uh, bronchogenic adenocarcinoma. Uh, and that's due to liberation of tissue factor, factor three. Uh, large cell carcinoma can cause gynecomastia, estrogen effect. Okay, so a lot we can chat about, uh, but your take home is just 
cachexia and malignancy is due to TNF-alpha. That's it. 